May Christ's word only be spoken and Christ's word only be heard. Amen. Please be seated. The teaching of Jesus today is that those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Yet that may not be our experience in this society we live in. Certainly not the way Wall Street works, for example. The aggressive ones push to the head of the table, win the deals, and are exalted with wealth and celebrity. The way of the world is eat or be eaten. He who hesitates is lost, as my husband says. Humility will never gain, tra gain you traction in the race to be noticed. But in God's economy, things are flipped around. Humility is valued. It's not about debasing oneself, but about approaching everything and everyone with curiosity and a readiness to be surprised or delighted. Even those who cannot give you social status or repay you for your kindness. There are two aspects about humility that I'd like to share with you this morning. The first is those who are humble have an ability to listen. And the second is humility can be reflected in what we say. So first, to be humble is to be able to listen. Often we presume that the person we're speaking with, we already know what they're going to say, right? So why should we have to listen? We tune out, maybe unconsciously, or we smile dismissively. We think we already know what our child will say. We've heard our child speak all the time. We, we know what our husband or wife is going to say. We know what our parents will say. We don't have time in this busy world to listen that carefully to what we already know, right? There was a businesswoman who felt it was her job to advise her husband and her adult children because she was successful and she presumed that she knew more than they did, so she didn't find it a good use of her time or particularly interesting to listen to them. We could say she exalted herself. But we also know that children who don't feel listened to tend to act out. An extreme case could be the teenager who resorts to gun violence. And what a terrible tragedy once again in Texas this weekend. Did you know that 51 people died in mass shootings in August alone? In the letter to the Hebrews, mutual love is set forth as something for us to aspire to. It's about listening to each other with compassion. To give the other person in your conversation the sense that you really care about what they're saying. What they're saying matters to you. The radio show On Being with Krista Tippett is always on Sunday morning, and I never get to listen to it. But I, there is such a thing as podcasts now, so I've heard that they have a grounding virtues project that describes listening as one of their grounding virtues. And listening is defined there as more than being quiet while others have their say. It's about presence as much as it is about receiving. It's about connection more than observing. It involves vulnerability, a willingness to be surprised, to let go of assumptions, and take in ambiguity. Now, the second thing about humility is to choose our words with care, because when we speak, our words do matter. Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel that the things that come out of a person's mouth defile because they come from the heart. So the condition of our heart is reflected in the words we choose. Do our words sound vile, dismissive, or do they come forth in kindness? Are we always offering advice but reluctant to work on ourselves? The Quaker writer Parker Palmer tells how he and his wife have a running joke between them. If I want advice, I'll pay for it. I have some good listeners in my life. I try to, I bet you do too. 
I try to think, you know, what's making them a good listener? Are they trying to fix me? Are they tr being truly present to me? Or do I see their mind wandering off? It's hard to be a good listener. David Isay, who was the founder of StoryCorps and winner of the MacArthur Genius Prize, he started listening to people whose stories were not being heard, he felt. And now he's collected over 200,000 conversations from all 50 states and Puerto Rico, recording them and protecting them in the National Archives of the Library of Congress. He realized that you need to create a sacred space to truly listen to the important stories that others tell. He's found that one person's story can help others recover from traumatic experiences. For example, StoryCorps has a new initiative called Military Voices. It allows veterans to know that their country is listening to their stories. And they have another initiative called Road to Resilience, stories that help children cope with grief after the loss of a parent. In the end, Issei says, it all comes down to the stories of our birth and our life and our death. As I was reading that, I thought, you know, church is our designated sacred space to listen to God and to listen to each other. It's not a place to exalt ourselves, but to be still in this quiet, beautiful space set aside in our week, a place to be still and listen and maybe ask the question, what treasure is it that scripture is offering to me today? What nugget can I take out with me into my week that will sustain me? I think of the balm of my mother's voice on the telephone when I was growing up. All through my life, I lived far away from home, and that weekly telephone call with my mother was, was like medicine to my soul. Just hearing her speak on the other end of the phone, I would just start to weep. And I missed her so much. I needed her to listen to me tell her what I was going through. I needed her to speak to me her wisdom and her love. I think more than ever, we need to hear each other's voices. Especially in this culture today, we're moving farther away from that opportunity to talk to each other in person. And I think, don't you wish that you could have heard Jesus' voice? in person. I think the disciples were so blessed to follow him around, hear his voice for those three years of ministry where he was going from village to village, healing people, teaching. Incredible. And then he would give them their, his you know, secret interpretations of parables and you know, they, they got to be right next to him and experiencing that. Every word he spoke is something to cherish. The key for us is to listen to Christ's story with our hearts. How he was born in human form, what he taught, how he healed us in solidarity with our human ordeals, and how he did not exalt himself even though he came from God. He totally humbled himself, even as far as suffering death upon the cross. So our story is connected to the hope of the risen Christ. We may not have heard his voice in person, but we have access to him through our faith. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So to conclude, there are two things about humility that help us imitate the humble faith that Jesus had, our listening and our speaking. In both of these things, may we share compassion and may we also let mutual love continue. For Christ's sake, amen.